recording. Great, Danielle, I'm gonna give you your intro before you dive in and get started and then I'll hand it off to you. Awesome. So again, Danielle Miano is our expert presenter today. And while she is on the Memory Facts team, she's also an expert storyteller herself. And I wanna highlight two really notable projects that she's worked on as a writer. She's written a full length feature film about a trans athlete, as well as a TV, a TV series that features a women's sports team. And it was the runner up in the Austin Film Festival. So she is using the process that she is going to teach you day to day to be a writer. Um, she was a keynote speaker for Sony Pride in 2021 and so much more. So Danielle, we have our screen up. If you're ready to take it away, I'm gonna hand yeah. it off to you. I am, thank you so much for that intro. Um, the hero's journey has definitely been a big part of my life when it comes to writing and storytelling. So I'm so excited to talk about this today with all of you and share what I've learned. Um, you know, my hope is, um, you know, everyone can learn a little bit more about story structure and how stories are shaped and take what they've learned back with them to their organization. Um, we're going to follow the hero's journey and do an activity um, on a very individual basis to kind of humanize that journey. But this can be done on a higher level for your organization as well. We've done it here at Memory Fox before because we're all about stories. So i um, really excited to talk about this stuff with you guys today. And, you know, maybe someone's going to end up writing their own screenplay because you can do that with this structure. So, um, but what is the hero's journey? Um, and, you know, most of you guys, I'm sure, have seen it play out in films, your favorite films. Actually, I would love to hear some of your favorite films. Um, feel free to chat that in. Um, that's always fun for me. One of my favorites um, and a childhood classic for me um, is The Wizard of Oz. And, you know, we're going to actually talk about the hero's journey today as it applies to a specific example um, of one of our customers, but I'll also make note of The Wizard of Oz along the way because that is my favorite movie, but feel free to chat in some of your favorite films, Star Wars, yep, awesome. Um, but you've seen this same hero's journey play out in pretty much all of those films and TV series. There's always someone who goes on an adventure, makes new friends, encounters some roadblocks, fights evil, and returns home a changed person. So you've seen it and that's what we're going to talk about today. So a little bit more about what it is and, you know, who Joseph Campbell is, which you probably saw in the advertisement. Um, he's somebody that just studied myths from all over the world. Um, he created one of the most central pieces of storytelling literature, which is a hero with a thousand faces. Um, he essentially just was retelling dozens of stories. So, and each of them represent the mono myth, which is the hero's journey. Um, and so we've seen that across time and throughout cultures, um, this human journey has been repeated. So it's been pretty cool to learn about that and continue to see it in film. And one of the things in places where it became famous and we started talking about it more was, um, I, who was his favorite, favorite film was it? Deborah's favorite, Star Wars. Um, and George Lucas credited it for influencing that film and now influences pretty much all films. Um, that you see today. So the three basic stages um, are the departure act, which the hero leaves their ordinary world. Um, and so we learn about who they are and we learn about what their issues are, what they are, what they are dealing with, and we get an opportunity to see truly who that hero is. And then the second stage, our second act is the initiation act where the hero ventures into the unknown, they go into new territory and they get transformed through various trials and tribulations. Um, this is the bulk of your story. And then the last act is the return act, the third act, where the hero returns in triumph um, and becomes a changed person. So the big idea here um, behind all of this is that though many of us um, experience challenges and the people that you support in your nonprofit experience challenges, um, you know, and that may seem really isolating, we're actually all connected through this pattern, through this journey and the storytelling journey that we all are going to learn about today. So hopefully we can learn a few things and, and take that stuff with us. Um, here is just from a higher level, um, what the hero's journey has been later adapted to, and there's 12 stages here. So as you can see, the hero starts and this is their normal world. And they're called to adventure and they meet a mentor. And then they cross this threshold and they 
they actually go on their journey. And so that, again, this is the bulk of your story where they are going through all their trials and tribulations. Um, they're, they meet friends, they meet enemies, and they go through this whole journey together. And then they return back a changed person, but they always come back home. So I like to pull up one of my favorite Jack Handy quotes at this point. <laughs> Before you criticize someone and walk a mile in their shoes, before you criticize someone, walk a mile in their shoes. That way you'll be a mile away from them and you'll have your sh their shoes. Um, but in reality, why this matters is because as marketers, you know, you can't really begin to understand how to tell someone's story unless we take the time to learn it. So ideally, if you can engage your audience in a powerful and relatable way, that can translate into taking action as well. So you know, today I'm going to be talking about an amazing example um, that's personal to me because it was a friend of mine who experienced this, um, you know, and it's about a veteran. I myself am not a veteran, um, you know, and as marketers, we're not always that person that we're writing about and we're talking about. So I think it's so important to spend time walking their path and really getting an opportunity to learn and understand what people are going through so that we can proper, properly talk about it and market it in different ways. So each step along this process is an opportunity to create impactful, authentic content, which we'll show you guys later on. All right, so you guys have the tool, I believe, correct? So Celine, you put it in the chat. Um, we have two different places where we can um, work today. I really encourage you to use this tool to either write in the Google Doc um, and type, a, type in all of your answers, print this out right underneath it. We did this again as an organization where we literally wrote underneath all of the, these different sections here. So this is your opportunity to really take a look at someone from your community and follow their journey um, through this tool. So we've broken it down from the 12 stages to actually 10. Um, and this was really in a way that we thought fit really well for nonprofits. Um, and like I said, we're going to go through an example along the way, which is a personal story of mine. Um, but I will encourage everybody at this point to start thinking about someone from their community that they would like to follow the journey of for this activity. So we're going to take that through step by step. And I really encourage you to get as detailed as, and specific as possible. This can be a made up person or it can be someone that you know that your organization has actually helped. So. Um, we're going to actually dive right in. Um, Celine, anything else from a logistics standpoint? I'm going to shut my door really quick here. So that's so I will resend that link for those who just joined. Um, but please follow along. We're going to give you some time to put this to work for your organization. So really think about it from your nonprofit's point of view. Yeah. And feel free to put stuff in the chat at each stage. I am going to give everybody a moment. So I'll, you know, we'll review what that stage is. You'll have an opportunity to write about it, think about it, put it in the chat, ask questions, we'll move on. I am going to move somewhat hastily just so we can get through everything, but feel free to ask any questions if you have them. Um, and yeah, and I think something to keep in mind too at each stage, and we'll go, we'll go back to this, but at each stage, like I mentioned, it is an opportunity to come up with really great posts um, for social media, for blog, for your website. So it's all different things to keep in mind. But the main thing that we want to keep in mind as we do this activity is put yourself in their shoes. So let's dive in. So we have our first stage here. Um, and this is where we're living in our ordinary world. And this is our who. So this is our opportunity to identify our hero. So for the, for the purpose of this activity, we're gonna get really specific, as I said. So identify who your hero is, a specific person with a challenge that your organization can help. So this is usually a single character, um, someone that you can visualize, that we can humanize. Um, let's get as specific as possible. Maybe you already have someone in mind. Um, feel free to chat in your hero if you um, are part of a nonprofit and you have somebody um, that you wanna share you know, feel free or use a fictitious name, which is what I will be doing. So for our example here, um, we're gonna talk about our veteran service organization that we work with. And it's actually the DAV, um, the Disabled American Veterans Organization. They're one of our customers um, and we love working with them and absolutely 
love their mission because we have veterans on our team. Um, and a friend of mine and I have obviously changed some of the information to keep her privacy, but um, our hero for the purpose of this example is going to be Kara, a 40 year old female army veteran. She's single, she's a member of the LGBTQ community and she's dealing with mental health issues about a year after returning home from civilian life. Um, I'll also make a note of, um, you know, compared to The Wizard of Oz, like I said, my favorite movie, um, in The Wizard of Oz, that was Dorothy. Pretty sure we all know that. Selena, I'm gonna like randomly ask you and see if you know the answers to who it is in the movie. I'm gonna put you on. Happy. I didn't tell you that we were gonna do this ahead of time, so perfect. Great. Okay, <laughs> great. So hopefully everybody has come up with a hero um, and we can move forward from here. So the next step in the journey is going to be identifying the priorities. So what are, what are your hero's priorities in their ordinary world? So this kind of sets the stage here. We're introducing our hero to the audience. It lets people identify with the hero as a normal person in a normal setting before the journey begins. So for Kara, that is somebody who, you know, her priority is she wants to find peace and purpose returning home, which includes finding a fulfilling job, community, and an ability to connect with others. Her previous ordinary world was really service and duty focused. So obviously, you know, this is going to be a change for her, but her priorities are, you know, trying to figure out what that new normal is. Um, and for The Wizard of Oz, you know, if you think about it in the beginning of that movie, they're really obvious about it. It's black and white, like it's super like monotoned and they're in Kansas and she literally sings somewhere over the rainbow and her priorities are you know she's bored there's no excitement she's looking for more fulfillment you know Kansas is is boring to her so we meet Dorothy and then we learn about her priorities so let's take a second to think about what the priorities are of your hero in the world that they currently live in and if you're following along in our Google Doc, you should still be on page one. So fill in and think about, put some bullets in there. Where, what are the priorities of your hero, of the person you are servicing? I'll give a couple seconds here. Still love um, that song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> Such a we good should have song. started with that, Danielle. I know, right. Okay, we're going to hop on to the next stage. And if anybody wants me to go slower, feel free to throw a little hand in the chat, like slow down. I want, I want more time on this step. Um, you know, as we mentioned, these resources are going to be available and you'll have time to print it out and work on this and ask questions. But, you know, if you want more time in this activity, feel free to let us know. Um, so we're going to move on to our next stage, which is the inciting incident. You know, what event would trigger them to accept this call to adventure and make the change that you can provide? So the call to adventure is about kind of booting the hero out of their comfort zone. In this stage, they're generally confronted with a problem or challenge they can no longer ignore. And the stakes of the adventure and the hero's goals become clear. So the only question at this point is, will they accept the challenge? Um, for Kara, um, our example, um, you know, this is kind of a more difficult one to talk about, but I, I do know that this is something that um, was really challenging for her. And it was literally one day when she couldn't get out of bed that morning. You know, everything felt incredibly heavy for her and it literally stopped her from being able to live her life that day. And I think sometimes, you know, and this is something that Joseph Campbell talks about, there's a lot of different um, ways in which this inciting incident happens. Um, it can be external, it can be internal. Um, for Dorothy, it was literally like a tornado that came and ripped her from her hometown. Um, so it whisks her to us. So it's sometimes a physical thing, but whatever that thing is, there's um, something that probably is going to trigger them to accept this call to, to adventure and potentially make that change. So sometimes it's a really hard thing. Sometimes it's a physical thing. Um, yeah. Anybody have any questions so far? No. We'll give Danielle, it. Danielle, I love your point of saying what what makes your client find you. So what what problem have they come across that makes them say I need help or mm -hmm. I need a service or if you're on the funding side, 
how does that nonprofit come to you for funding? Is it they have a program idea? Is it they talked to a client and had a challenge? So right. think about it really in that specific way. Right. What is that physical event or internal event that could happen? And there's really no wrong answers here. So this is like meant to be a brain dump at each step of all the different things that could happen at this stage of this person from your community. So, right, whatever comes to mind here um, about something that could happen at this point. All right, give a couple minutes here, seconds maybe. <laughs> I'm assuming that people are gonna let me know if they need more time. Um, Danielle, it looks like we have an example from Kathy and I can read it for her. For yeah. our cancer support organization, the inciting incident feels like a tornado, literally. And Kathy, you're right, a cancer diagnosis. That, yeah. it's, that is literally a tornado. Yeah, that's a, that is the tornado from Wizard of Oz for sure. There's, that's a pretty clear one, you know, and sometimes they are incredibly challenging ones and that's the world that I know a lot of nonprofits live in. So um, thanks for sharing that, Kathy. Okay, we can move on to our next um, call to adventure stage, which is the refusal. So even after, um, you know, even after that happens, um, sometimes there's barriers that would prevent them from making the necessary change. You know, for Kara, even after that morning where she couldn't get out of bed, there was still an, an, a reflection on this, something that was stopping her from wanting to actually make that step. So, you know, it's difficult for her to accept help from others because she's been the one that has been trained to do the helping for so long. She doesn't want to bother anyone with her problems since she's been, she's seen so much worse in the world. Um, and so I think, you know, this barrier that's preventing her from making that step, um, it was internal. Um, and I think these can be internal and external, but it's, it's taking this step, this moment to think about what's something that would even after that inciting incident happens, what would still prevent them from making that next step to finding you that one step before they reach out and they're like, I don't know, like, I don't want to bother them, you know, whatever it is for your organization. Um, this is a great moment to think about that moment before they reach out. Um, and, and what would prevent them from doing that. Um, and I think with the Wizard of Oz, you know, I think Dorothy literally like ran away from the tornado because she was like trying to save, save Toto. Um, and then she like realized that Aunt Em and Uncle Henry really do care about her. She tries to run back, it's too late. Cyclone just takes her. But, um, but yeah, so what are the barriers that would prevent people from, from making that change? And again, just feel free to jot it down, chat it in, um, ask any questions. Um, yeah. So we will give a set, couple seconds here. Um, like I said, it's there's no real wrong answers here. Um, and as we do this too, I'll just say that, you know, part of the storytelling structure, sometimes um, someone's story doesn't match this exactly. And I think it's important to know that in the end of the day, the most important thing in this is staying authentic and true to the real story that you either is in your head or, or that you know to be true about this person. So if it doesn't feel like it's fitting exactly as this journey is going, it's okay. This is just designed to kind of get you to think about what your hero goes through at each step. So here, our next step is going to be crossing the threshold. So this is when we meet the mentor, which is you. So how can you help? What services does your organization provide that would positively influence their specific challenges? So, you know, I know that a lot of organizations have probably like a general um, mission statement, some general services, but this is our opportunity to actually really connect the dots between that challenge that you know that this person specifically that you're thinking of has and the service that would answer that and influence that for you. So take a second to write down what that is. Um, the mentor for um, the mentor for Kara is, you know, the veteran organization, the DAV. Um, and, you know, their main purpose is 
to help veterans lead high quality lives with respect and dignity. They, they do this by ensuring that veterans and their families can, can access all the benefits that they, that they have. Um, and Kara wants to find affordable mental health services. So she can find a local benefits expert to get there. They have benefits offices all over the country. So, um, you know, for her, the specific service or what she's looking for is a benefits officer that can help her figure out how am I going to make the connection between myself and a therapist? Um, what can I do to move forward? So take a second to think about what service you provide that would help answer this challenge. So hopefully everybody kind of has a good understanding of what their organization does and how they can help. Um, so just write all that down, anything that comes to mind that's specific here so we can continue them on their journey. And as we do that, and we're crossing into that first threshold, we like to think about how does the hero find their mentor and cross that threshold into a better world? So we know what you do, how do they find you? How do they get there? What's, what's the meeting point here? So, you know, for Kara, this was um, the moment where she reached out to a childhood friend and she couldn't get out of bed that day. So that was her connection. She reaches out to a friend. That friend had other military friends and family who referred her to the DAV. So for her, that was a word of mouth, right? And so there's lots of different ways where we connect with our community. Um, sometimes it's Google, social media, um, there's all these different, um, there's fundraisers, there's galas, there's all different ways in which we find the mentor. What does that look like for you? And Danielle, we had another example in the chat from Kristen Hickman. And Kristen, Kristen explains, as a Christian nonprofit, one of our partners, a retired disabled widow, is living in deplorable conditions. We're organizing a working hands event and fundraising effort to improve her situation. Any um, questions or ideas that you'd respond to that? I mean, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, Kristen is doing really important work. Um, you know, I think organizing a working hands event and fundraising effort to improve our situation, that's amazing. I mean, I guess I'd be curious how, um, how she found you guys. Um, you know, how did she know about your organization or how did you, how did you find, um, how did you find them? You know, that would be interesting for me to understand for this stage. Um, that's an, an amazing, that's an amazing example. Um, yeah see here. So how did the hero find their mentor? So if anybody has any other questions about this stage, okay, great. So this next stage here um, is going to be um, enemies and tests. So are there any? So as they step into this new world with you as a mentor, what battles might they do what, what battles might they have to overcome? So even after they find you, the hero is going to face new challenges. Um, and, you know, specifically for Kara, um, you know, even though they found the DAV and they found a benefits office, officer, Kara compares herself to how it seems other veterans she knows are doing. So they seem happy, healthy, acclimated. And she starts to feel a little bit of shame about asking for help since the people around her didn't need any. The paperwork, the process of finding a therapist and that she can afford and trust is overwhelming. So there's internal and external things happening here. So these are your enemies and the tests. Um, this is what, this is where the learning really happens. So these are, this is our opportunity to truly think about what are the things that your hero is going to face in this process um, that's going to allow them to evolve and grow with you, the mentor by their side. Um, and I, and I definitely think that, you know, this ends up being the bulk of the story. Um, the majority of the, of the journey of, of the hero, um, you know, and for Dorothy, it was the Wicked Witch was a very obvious and clear enemy for her. She meets friends, the Tin Man, the Lion, all these people that start to help her grow. Um, so I think, you know, just spending time thinking about 
even after they find you, what challenges they're going to experience as they acclimate um, and use your services. And I keep thinking about that example um, that was shared um, with us from Kristen. You know, and I think even after you help um, this retired disabled widow, you know, she is going to have to go back to her regular life someday, right? It's it's she still lives in this world. And so by you helping her, you're helping improve her situation, um, which is so important. But I think taking that time to really think about, and this can be hard, right? Thinking about the real things and the real challenges that she goes through, even as we fundraise and we help people in their situation, what are the day-to-day -day things that just make their lives difficult um, so that you can connect with what they're really going through? So from here, and I know that can be, I mean, this can be a very long one. I feel like you can end up writing forever about all the different challenges, but um, we'll move on to this next stage here. Um, so the transformation. So how has working through their ordeals with you as a mentor created positive change? So here, this is kind of like the climax of our story, right? So this is everything that has happened prior to the stage culminates to like a crowning test for the hero. This is the breakthrough. So this is our opportunity to think about, you know, how has that positive change really affected them? So for Kara, this provides a pathway for Kara to find and start seeing a therapist that makes space for her to address what she's, what's been holding her back. Um, so she begins feeling unstuck for her. This means having the capacity to find a fulfilling job and relationships. Um, full disclosure, definitely stole the unstuckness from Brene Brown. <laughs> but, you know, when you talk about mental health and, you know, taking time to address the things that will allow you to live, you know, the life that you want, you know, it's taking time to slow down and address those things. And so the ability for Kara to find that therapist after connecting with the DAV, none of that stuff would have happened had she not gotten that help from this organization. So I think it's really important to think about the effect that you're starting to have on your hero. I mean, ultimately, they're going to take this. We want to empower people to take ownership of that. And, you know, we don't want to we don't want to take credit for these things. We don't want to say, oh, we're as, as a mentor, we don't want to say, oh, if it weren't for us, you know, you would never be the person you are today. So it's always good, you know, to be mindful about how you address this. But I think it's important to actually take some time to examine, you know, what, where are the pieces that I helped them? Um, because th this is really what creates really impactful blogs. This is what, this is what takes, that actually helps create impactful videos and stories. Um, this is your opportunity to really think about where you connected with them and how that helped. To me, this is one of the most impactful um, steps. I think, you know, this is where some of the most powerful content can come from. So spending time in this transformation stage thinking about it, you think can be super helpful. Um, and I, and our, 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 um, our Wizard of Oz example, let's see her transformation. So I think that this one is like, do you know what it is, Celine? Do you know what, do you know what, what, um, when Dorothy like transforms truly? Is it, not when, right. okay. Is it, I feel like I'm on the spot and I feel like I'm being, I like it. Um, it's okay if so, you don't know it. No, is it when, is it after she talks to the wizard and she realizes that she always had her magic? Would that be it? You nailed it. So, oh, well, so what's interesting is, I thank you, so, Kristen. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and Glinda reminds her of this, the mentor, right? So the mentor is still has, it, they still have a hand in this step, but Glinda reminds her that she had the ability to return home from the first minute she was in Oz. And the magic appears, it, when the magic slippers appear on her feet, and then Glinda explains that she didn't tell Dorothy at the beginning because she wouldn't have believed her, right? And so Dorothy needed to learn those lessons herself and take the journey so that she can complete her quest. So it's like empowering her to, as the mentor, you can't just be like, here's your shoes at the beginning, right? You have to really let people experience the journey and go through all of these trials and tribulations because we're not just a answer, right? We let people 
grow in themselves and evolve themselves. And then they become more sustainable um, and really able to face those challenges. Um, so Dorothy had it all along, but she had to have the journey first, right? And Danielle, we have um, Norlay, and forgive me if I, saw, I said your name wrong. She was interested in coming off mute just to talk about the small business resource group. So Norlay, feel free to jump in and walk us through your transformation. Yeah. Hi, yes, um, Nora Lee writes like- Thank so, you. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it's not a comment. Um, yeah, so recently as in this week, we did a walking campaign. Um, I am a program coordinator for a small business resource group, and we are part of a lab, larger um, collaborative of nonprofits, but we ran into this business owner. We actually had lunch there. We were just touching base, and she shared that, you know, she's grateful to have survived the pandemic um, portion of things, but she has seen an, a 40% loss of um, profits in her business, and in order to make the pivoting, right, so getting the clover... Um, do we uh, deliver? Let me just turn this down. Hold on. Um, she's had to lean on payday loans and cash advances um, to do so. And so, because she did go right to the traditional large banks and local credit unions, and they were like, no, you know, you're not ready. Um, and so um, we were like, we have CADFIs, right? So they're definitely um the interest rate is higher right because they the risk um of working with smaller businesses but you know they're not like cash advances where i think she didn't want to share and um you know the uh credit the the rate of the loans mm -hmm. um but it was because she was uncomfortable she was like you're gonna pass out so she's like yeah. but i've had to do what i've had to do um, to survive. So that same day, we reached out to one of our partners um, who does loans as small as five hundred, you know, dollars. And um, <clears throat> then we have other partners that you know go up to fifty thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand. Um, so we're able to move her from away from this, you know, predatory loans because she says that she wow. doesn't even want to answer her phone anymore. She's like, because I feel she. Then these are her words. She's like, they can smell it. They're like. <laughs> I am getting all these calls yeah. from people offering me these loans. And so um, they did share with her that, she, you know, once she got that first uh, cash advance, she went on a list. So the moment that cash advance gets wow. paid, she, you know, it gets shared and then everybody jumps in. Like, do you want another one? We can help you out. Right. So yeah. that's um, what those we have. Are, those are the enemies. <laughs> If we talk about the the hero's journey in terms of it's like those are the enemies, the people that are coming after her, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. And so, you know, what do you think in terms of like for her transformation? I mean, you guys allowed her to, you know, feel more stable financially and, you know, allowed her to get on her way. Um, and I guess I would ask you, you know, what how do you feel like working with her like how do you feel like that changed her life like i mean is that and it's the life of her it's she has a nonprofit, right no she she's a for it's a restaurant okay right got it so how do you feel like you really changed were able to help change you know her path i think she went from a place of survival right she was just trying to get by day to day to a um, hope, right? So not, she says she's paid a hundred thousand dollars. Like she has repaid, uh, back as far as loan wise, a hundred thousand um, dollars, in the last year. Wow. Right? So in telling her, like you could take those funds and because she's had to pivot, right. So she's no longer having, um, indoor seating. She's closed off that port of part of her business. She wants to expand and kind of do a patio. So she saw wow. that hope, right? So she's saving herself this money from paying back interest, she can use that to make that um, patio a reality. Wow. And that outdoor seating. So you have like an actual physical transition too. you have a visual transition that you can transformation that you can see. So it's not only you've impacted a person that like you said, that went from survival mode to like hope, you know, and restoring her hope, but you can physically see the transformation in her restaurant. That's so cool. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, anyone else want to 
It looks like Danielle Kathy Linder raised her hand. Okay, great. Kathy, feel free to come off mute. Kathy. Yeah. So Danielle, I really appreciate your comment about you know, not taking credit for the hero's journey. I think as nonprofits, you know, we will sometimes have an end of year letter, right? And we want to mm -hmm. feature a patient story or somebody we've helped. And sometimes it's hard to keep yourself out of it and saying, you know, start talking about your own programming and, and how and how it helped. Like it belongs in the story, but really yeah. keeping the hero story to the hero themselves mm -hmm. can sometimes be a challenge. And and oftentimes when you're using these stories for fundraising or, you know, reaching out to donors, it's really hard to make it succinct, but still powerful. Because like right. you said, the challenges portion of it, what some of these people have gone through can be pages and pages, but you've got, you know, a four paragraph email to get something impactful out. So that's, that's often challenging for us. Yeah. And, and it's hard to not seem like you're being icky about it, right? You don't want, it's, it's like such a balance of trying to be authentic and sharing these stories. And that's the constant battle, right? Especially in nonprofit marketing, it's like you're, you're sharing people's true challenges, but that's why I think the more you can just stay authentic. And as marketers, we can truly like learn from people and take time to like live in each step of this journey that like gives you a much easier way to talk about it in an authentic way. And usually too, like if you can get, I mean, we're going to move and actually that's a kind of a good segue because we're going to be moving to talking a little bit about different questions and prompts that we can ask our hero at each step of the journey to kind of really engage them to talk about it. Cause ultimately if we can get our heroes to talk about it and this isn't always the case. And I totally, we know better than anyone at memory Fox that like not, you can't always talk to the person and get a video of the person that benefited from your services. Um, but if you can, and you have the ability to get a video um, and get someone talking about it, that can really be impactful. Mm -hmm. But thank you for sharing that. That's, yeah, that's so true. Um, thanks for coming up. Great. So we are going to move along here because we are coming up um, on our time soon. So I don't mean to speed ahead, but I thought that was really great for people to come up and share a little bit. So thank you for both for doing that. Um, so we're getting into our final stages here, which is the new world and our journey back. So how will they integrate what they have learned mastering the new world? What does their new world look like now that you've helped? And, you know, for Kara, she just got her first job after her time in service. She's really excited about, I mean, she's literally just starting it, but she's starting to feel like she's really come home. And the whole, I think that what I really heard from her was like that I'm excited about, like the job. Yes. Like that's your tangible thing, but like that feeling of like, excitement about something like I could hear that change and so you know I'm sure the DAV can take a look at that and say man I actually helped you know this veteran find a pathway to get to a place where they're they're actually excited about something again and that's the real win right so what are what does this new world look like now that you've helped this person um and you know I think for Dorothy, let's see, she completes her journey. I just love going back to the Wizard of Oz because I feel like it's just so easy. You know, they do, they paint such a good picture. They start in black and white. They go to all these amazing, beautiful colors and then they go back. She goes back to Kansas, right? She always has to go back home. And basically I think, you know, Dorothy's reunited with her family, which completes her hero's journey. Um, although I kind of feel like her family doesn't really realize that she was gone, um, they're still happy she's home. And the ability for her to, you know, realize that there's no place like home, I think is really, is really the resolution there. But she, you know, she gets what she wants in life by believing in herself. And, you know, so he's literally returning back home. And that's why we saw in the circle or in the hero's journey, it's a circle. And in this, for this activity, we have it as like a, a climb, you know, just to make space to write in, but the hero's journey is a circle and they always do return back home. And we're able to see the change that occurred because of this journey and this process and the help that you were able to provide them. And the last thing, which is actually, you know, kind of a part of this as well is um, the new world ambassador. And this is kind of a new, this is kind of one that we added as a team here because we thought it was a really great way to think about this as marketers, but 
what made their experience so powerful that they would spread the good word? You know, what would make them share their story? Um, so I think, you know, just being able to think about what was it, what part of that process, what part of that journey was so impactful that they would say something, share it on social media, whatever it is. But for Kara, um, I think the moment for her was that she didn't feel judged by her ex, the benefits expert that she met with. You know, she was treated with so much respect um, for the sacrifices that she made for the for her country. So she wants others to know that they can feel the same. So I think that moment for her is like a moment that you can pinpoint. And again, hopefully there's a lot of moments that you can pinpoint along this journey that, you know, would make it so that that person would share your services with others. And only because we're coming up, Celine, right? We're, we're pretty much almost at time. Okay. Only because we're coming up on time here. And I would love to spend like the rest of my day talking about this. <laughs> um, I'll just go through these um, questions that you can have at each stage of the journey. So, I mean, obviously we're going to go through this fast. You're probably not going to be able to write as many questions, but I will go through just some example questions. So this is designed to um, ask a prompt or question to your hero at each step of the journey to get them to engage and talk about what it was like at that step and hopefully provide you some good material to work with. So in this first stage for the who, when we're talking about the protagonist, your hero, just the basic, tell us about yourself, anything you want to share, finish the sentence. One thing about me that you should know is, again, this is like that humanizing step where the audience is connecting with your, your hero. So just really basic about me questions are great to have because then you're starting to really humanize your mission. Who are the people of my mission and, and what do they sound like and what is, what's important to them? Which brings us to the priorities question. You know, what is a day in your life like? Um, what do you remember about what your life was like before you reached out to Organization X? So engaging people to talk about their priorities, um, their day to day, and what their life was like before they met you. And um, so we're going a little bit over, but if anybody would like to stay, feel free to stay. It's just going to be a couple more minutes. Um, we are going to send up a follow up email with this um, recording, with all of these questions. So if you do have to leave, we completely understand, but I am gonna just finish this out for those that can stay. Um, so the mentor stage, um, what stuck out to you about Organization X that made you want to reach out for help? Um, how did you find out about Organization X? That's something that we talked about, right? For, for Kara, it was word of mouth, but literally getting the opportunity to ask Kara directly, how did you find out about X? will engage them to actually, you know, talk about what that journey was like. The transformation stage, how is working with organization X created change in your life? Um, and I think maybe we have questions we wanna. We just have some people saying thank you to you, Danielle. Oh. So you can keep going and flag okay. your hand and we'll begin. Okay, great. Um, and then the journey back, you know, how will you take what you have learned back home with you? Um, this is my favorite question. How would you describe the impact that Organization X had on your life to someone that had the same challenge as you? And I think that is like our moment of like the teaching someone how to fish. Like if they truly learn from their experience, that's like your testimonial, but that's your advertisement. That's does somebody feel so deeply connected to the mission and, and feel changed so much that they can speak to that um, and how would they explain it to somebody else? You know, that's a really great way to get people to engage and talk about what you do. Um, yeah, and I, that is essentially it for today. Um, I love talking about this stuff. So my email is here. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific questions and we'll bring up, I think maybe there is maybe one, um, Kathy might have a question, but I'll just say to everybody else for now that, um, the email is in here. Feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to talk about this. Um, you can always schedule um, some time with the Memory Fox team. If you're a current customer, we're going to put our customer service team's information in there as well. So you'll be able to schedule some time with our team to talk about you how you could potentially shape a Memory Fox campaign to follow the hero's journey and actually engage those type of questions from your community. So we're definitely happy to help you with that. 
if you're someone who wants to learn more about Memory Fox and you want to schedule some time with us, we're happy to do that. But truly, the point of being here today was to talk about the hero's journey and talk about, you know, and start thinking about what it is that our community goes through so how we can better reach our audiences. So thank you, Danielle, and please share your feedback. That QR code is there. Submit a video. Tell us how we did and what you'd like to see next time. We do have another webinar coming up. Um, Kathy, thanks for teeing us up on that. It is all about telling your money story with an expert in the field of that, Lori Jacob with. So we hope to see you all again in a couple of weeks, and we will keep doing this to make sure we're getting you and creating, cultivating that community of nonprofit storytellers. So thank you. Happy Friday, April Fool's Day. Um, but thanks, Danielle, again, and what a wonderful yeah. presentation. And I, and I see we have actually some people from the DAV team here. So I I appreciate it. Us. letting us use um, use that example. Hopefully it was helpful, um, but they do incredible work over there. So if you don't know about the DAV, go check them out. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much again for doing this with me. Um, feel free to reach out and share your feedback and we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Norley. Thank you. Thank you. It's Haley. I feel like Haley was out of the office and she still made time to come see us today on vacation, maybe. <laughs>